Before U.S. Senator Tim Scott's new memoir hits store shelves, there is already a correction. And this correction is not coming from the senator, but from the publisher. Nelson Books wrote, quote, This book is a political memoir that included his core messages as he prepares to make a presidential bid in 2022. But Senator Scott says he is not running for president. In our one-on-one -on -one conversation, the former Charleston County Councilman turned U.S. Congressman, now U.S. Senator, tells me how he went from poverty to politics in the pages of America, a redemption story. I have a great race that I'm in the middle of running here shortly. Presidential politics is just a little too far outside of my sight. U.S. Senator Tim Scott making it clear that he has no plans to run for president, but in his new memoir, America, a Redemption Story, there is a chapter named Tim Scott for President. I have a chapter called Tim Scott for President. So you may want to read that chapter and figure out what I think about presidents. Senator Scott says the book is written to bring voice to the progress he's seen in America, like taking his grandfather, Artis Ware, to vote for an African-American president. The magnitude of progress that he could not believe he'd lived long enough to see was overwhelming him and it overwhelmed me. Senator Scott says the American dream is different for different people. Each chapter of his book describing a lesson or talking about a mentor like Ed Bryant, the former president of the North Charleston branch of the NAACP. He really taught me at 9 years old, 10 years old, 11 years old to think for myself. He, he taught me to be compassionate towards people who didn't believe the way I believed. He taught me to be without question prepared to debate the issues and to defend my value system. You talk in the book about being stopped more than 20 times for driving while black. Explain yes. what you mean by that. While I am emphatically in support of, of our law enforcement officers, I want people to understand that I want the best wearing the badge because I've had the experiences of just driving while black 20 plus times being stopped for no other reason. There's not a binary choice in either supporting law enforcement or supporting communities of color. If you want to support one, you have to support the other. In Chapter 14 of the book, Senator Scott talks about January 6th, his vote to affirm the election, and whether President Trump should be held responsible for the insurrection. But one of the most important votes I made was the night of January the 6th when we went back out and we affirmed the election of President Biden. Uh, I think that was a amazing and beautiful moment in American history. Has anything come out of the January 6th hearings that made you change your opinion about the president and would you vote differently? The short answer is no, I wouldn't have voted any differently. Uh, we should hold the individuals that put us in harm's way as responsible for their actions. And at the same time, we should understand what President Trump did and didn't do. Senator Scott, I've heard you say that it's been difficult for Republicans to reach African-American voters. Do you have the kind of relationship you want with the African-American community? The truth is that whether you vote for me or not, I work for the state of South Carolina and I work for those voters. So I'm always looking for ways to engage. I do wish, Carolyn, that people would judge me based on what I do and not the party that I'm affiliated with. Disproportionately speaking, African Americans may define me based on my party affiliation. 95% of the people who give me the stink eye, so to speak. Senator, you just said stink eye. Well, you know, <laughs> I am from North Charleston, so people give me the stink eye. And here's what I've learned, that they have no clue why they don't like me. It's just their perception. Senator Scott says his life story is America's story. Americans are not the same, but there are opportunities in this country, and he says he strives to make them available to everyone. When I was a kid growing up and nearly failing out of high school as a freshman at Stahl High School, one of the things I had lost was the hope of a better future. I was able to catch the dream, and by catching it, I mean I was empowered to make my life better because I knew there was a chance that if I kept working hard, a miracle would happen. And if you're interested in hearing Senator Scott talk about his book, he will be at his home church, Seacoast in Mount Pleasant, on Saturday from 2 until 3 o'clock. We have registration information on our website.
CountOnTwo.com.